Let me get a shot for you. Now say the situation was just the opposite, and I hadn't hit my shot from the right to left. I just reversed things a little bit. I'd aim my body right of the target and the club face right of the target. Instead of taking the club outside like we did on a fade, I would just take the club on an inside plane, coming down through the ball, dead in the legs, letting the arms and shoulders carry the ball through. It's not that complicated at all. Let me hit a shot for you. Let's take a look in my alignment for the draw. My feet, hips, and shoulders point to the right of my target, and my club face points at the target. It's that pin way out in the distance. Then I make my normal swing. I just concentrate on taking the club inside on the back swing. Coming down, you can see that my club is still traveling on the inside path, right along the line of my feet. The ball starts out in the direction of my body alignment and curves back toward the target. Game of golf, the art of maneuvering the golf ball. Remember, if you hook the ball into the trees, you can hook it out. If you slice it in the trees, you can slice it out as well. So no matter where you are on the golf course, you can get yourself out of trouble just by learning the art of maneuvering the golf ball. Now to maneuver the golf ball, you have to be able to spin it. Now to spin it, what we're going to do here is demonstrate with a basketball two different colors to show you the spin on a left to right shot or a right to left shot. So let's talk about the spin. You see this uh, vertical line right here? That's on an imaginary plane from your seat in your lounge room through your television set straight down to the flag. Right? So there's an imaginary line running down there right through there. Now we just imagine there's a tree right in front of us 30, 40 feet away and we have to hook the ball around the tree. What do we got to do? We got to impart a right to left spin on it. Right to left, this motion, right? So we're going to have to get the ball turning. Now, remember the game of golf is a game of opposites. To get the ball to go left, we got to hit it right to get that spin. Vice versa, to get the ball to go right, we've got to hit it left. So imagine, here's the palm of my hand, golf club. Whatever golf club it is, the imaginary line again, straight through the vertical line on this basketball. Then my palm of my hand is a golf club coming through the inside of the line. Keep that imaginary line in your mind now. The palm of my hand is coming through the inside of the line. It's going to strike the basketball or the golf ball, this position here, and it's going to spin it this way. Right to left spin. It's going to hit it. The ball is going to go out to the right and hook back with the spin. Okay? Now, that's the simplest way you can relate hand-eye coordination to the golf club on the ball to hook it. Obviously, now it's the opposite for a slice. Vertical line, imaginary plane through the ball, but this time, instead of coming on the inside of the line, we want to come from the outside across the ball. So our plane of our golf club is coming down this way, across the plane of your imaginary plane, strike the ball here, and it's going to impart a left or right spin this way. I think that's a very simple thing for you to think of if you hit it in the trees because now you're going to be able to relate the spin of the ball to the direction. So good luck with your slices and hooks. Now, what I'm going to do now is let's forget about this basketball. I'm going to go show you the real thing. One thing we've got to talk about now is if you're going to hit a left to right shot or a right to left shot, there's going to be a lot of variations in yardages. Now we're going to get into the technical side of it, and I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible for you. You know, a lot of people tell you, well, if you're going to hook the ball, you've got to change your grip. You know, now change your grip means to get it stronger. Remember the grip sequence? Get your left hand pointing to the sky. You're going to hook it because the club face is going to close. Well, I don't necessarily agree with this. Remember, again, I use the word repetition. That's what we want to keep, repetition. The same goal swing for every shot, but let the club face do the work. That's what I like to do. I will, so what I do is I maintain my same grip you know, for whatever shot I want. You see the tree here, I want to hook it around this tree. The flag is almost, well, just right of the tree trunk there. So what I'm going to do, now watch closely and try and understand this because it, it's so simple, it's ridiculous. 
put your club face where you want the ball to finish so the club face is going to be on the target, the flag. So you see my club face down there? It's lined up to the flag. Now, without changing or doing anything to my grip or my stance, I'm going to take my normal grip, but this time I'm going to aim my body at the right-hand chimney up there. Pick out a point to aim at with your body because you want to get yourself around the object you're trying to get away from. So this time I'm going to think of the chimney. So my club face is going to remain where I want the ball to finish. I want my body to take the club face around the object that I'm trying to get around. So I'm, all I do now is look at the chimney. So now if you notice, my club face has stayed the same. My body is aiming at the chimney. Now, can you understand what's going to happen? I haven't changed a thing with my grip, my stance, or my swing. The club face is going to impart all the right to left spin on it on the ball that I want. Obviously, the more you want to hook it, the more you tow it in. The less I want to hook it, the straighter you keep your club face. Very simple. We don't want to confuse the game of golf. The game of golf is very confusing as it is because there's so many different parts that we've got to understand. So if we can keep this art of maneuvering the golf ball down to a simple form, you're going to get yourself out of trouble a lot easier. So I'm going to go through the routine again. Remember, think of the object you want to go around. How much hook do you want to put on the ball? Okay, we need to put about 45, 50 feet of hook on this shot. Put the golf club where you want the ball to finish. Your club face is aiming at that point vis-a-vis -vis the flag. I want my body to aim around the trouble, which is the tree. So I aim at the chimney. From there, I take my normal grip, normal stance, and without changing anything, I'm going to go ahead and hit it, and you'll see what happens. The ball will hook around the object. Very simple procedure. Now, let me touch on something just a little bit before we leave the hook shot, is if you're going to hook the ball, remember you're going to make the ball go further because your club face is getting loft taken off it. The more you tow it in, the less loft you have on the golf club. So let's say this shot here was about 145 yards. Well, yeah, that's normally an eight iron off a regular shot. So what I've done is I'll take a nine iron or even a pitching wedge because it's going to tow in. It's going to make the ball go further. Keep that in your mind. That's the only thing you want to think about or you, the equation you're trying to work out, the relationship between the closed club face and the distance to the ball. The other point, don't try and land the ball near the flag. Let it land short because it's going to have a top spin roll and it's going to roll a little bit further. So trying to, the art of move, maneuvering the ball from right to left is basically easy. Don't change anything in your golf game. Just change your club face. Dan, we sort of got ourselves behind a tree here. Looks like it's going to have to be a little hook. Well, as you can see, the flag is directly behind that tree. It's going to require a, a bend from right to left to get that ball around that tree to get it on the green. So what we'll try to do is I'll try to close my stance, bring my right toe back, and I'll try to strengthen my grip also by rolling my left hand toward the right side of my body and putting my right hand under more, giving it a, being a stronger grip and a, a more power grip. And this should create a hook. The swing is a little bit from the inside out and over, and that should also create the hook. Let's see if that works. Here you go. We'll see that swing again at slow speed. A nice hook around that tree. All the pros are trying to fade the ball, and all the amateurs are trying to hook it. Well, almost all the amateurs, because some of you can, can hook the ball. But if you can, I'm going to show you what you have to do. Now, you know what you have to do when you draw the ball. You've got to pull that right foot back just a little bit, and you've got to turn the hands over so the club will close and you can hit it from right to left. But it's not happening to you, and the, probably the reason why it's not happening to you is you're taking the club back, and actually you're moving in front of it. You're getting in front of the ball, and the hands never having a chance to get to the ball and to roll over. 
What you have to do here is stay on the right side just a little bit longer. When you keep this right foot down longer, it makes the right knee stay in back of the left one, and it makes the right elbow stay underneath the left one. Results, it gives you a little more time to close the club. Let me show you. You might try taking the back swing a little bit slower. It'll give you time to stay on the right side just a little longer. And they said I couldn't hook a golf ball. I'm not saying I'm going to lower your handicap, but you are going to be able to shoot at those flags on the left of that green from now on.